Thank you for tuning in to the Just Believe Podcast. I'm your host, HP Mac. I appreciate you listening to this podcast. This podcast is raw, authentic, and unscripted. With that being said, enjoy the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Just Believe Podcast. I'm your host, HB Mac. Uh, I started this podcast because I'm a suicide survivor. Being a suicide survivor, I have to give back because I saw the stats in 2017, over 47,000 people had killed themselves. Suicide is ranked 10th in the US and second between the ages of 10 through 34 and fourth between the ages of 35 through 54 which is a crazy stat. So I have to give back. See, I battled depression for so long. And I know I'm here to help people out because I battled it for over nine years. And I just I just want to let people know that there's other options out there. And with that being said, here goes my story. So I'm originally from the Bronx. And I would never forget this one night coming home. It had to be about somewhere between two, three in the morning. I'm 19 years old. These two, these two blood members are just arguing in front of the building, sitting on the, near the bench. I'm just like, all right, cool, whatever. They just arguing. At first, I was like, maybe they just arguing about sports. And then I hear, you think I'm fucking playing? Where's my money? We all know, <laughs> and if you don't know, that's never good. <laughs> that's never a great conversation to be in. And then I hear. A sound of a gun clock. So I just run into the building. And as I open the building, their shots getting fired. Don't don't know what happened after that. I'm just like, oh man, this is crazy. So I hear footsteps heading towards the building. I didn't even have enough time to even think about hitting the stairs. I just had to hit the stairs. And then I hear, I'm gonna fucking kill you. You think I'm fucking playing? Huh? You think I'm fucking playing with you? <laughs> I had no idea who he was talking to, but I'll tell you one thing I wasn't going to find out. So as my heart hit the floor and then journal kicked in, just trying to stay alive, I ran up the stairs as fast as possible. Thankfully, my building has two staircases. So who knows my building better than me? Nobody, right? So I run in and out, in and out, in and out the staircase, just trying to get this person confused. And I, as I run into running in and out, there's two people. In the staircase. And he heard me run up and he's like, oh yeah, I got you, motherfucker, you're dead. I run into the other staircase. I hear, nah, nah, nah. Nah, I ain't going out like that, B. Nah, nah. <laughs> my heart is racing. Never thought, <laughs> my, <laughs> never thought I'd be in a situation like this. So I get out, finally get to my floor. Luckily, my apartment door. It's right there by the staircase. I didn't even have enough time to even think to like drop the keys or panic or anything. Thankfully, I unlocked the door, closed the door. As I closed the door, the staircase opened. I know this motherfucker here. I know he is. <sighs> Talking about heart racing. If I had to lock the door, I guaranteed he would let off shots at that door. <laughs> guaranteed. So as this door closed, bam, I lock my door. And as I walk into my bedroom, I hear pop, 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 pop in the staircase. And that was it. I was like, yo, something got to give. I'm done. I got to leave. I need a better situation to live in. This can't be life. I'm 19. I don't think I'm going to make it to 21. I'm not even in these streets doing anything. I'm just working regular nine to five. It has to be more to life. So during the time, my girlfriend, she she calls me. She's like, yo, look, man, why don't you just come out of here, man? That's crazy. You just, yeah, just come out here. Ain't nothing out here in Tampa. You'd be fine. It ain't that much, but, yo, got to be better than the hood that you live in. I'm like, all right, cool. The adrenaline of wanting to be alive was like major, right? And then and being in love is like, yo, cool. This might be the, the break that you need. Not realizing this was going to be a turning point for me. So I finally get there after working hard and saving up all my money. I'm like, all right, cool. This is different. I, right. It's real different. I don't really got to look over my head like that. Bet. 
I like it. Let me just grind out real hard and um, get the family and friends to come out and see how I'm living. But not yet, you know. I'm still at that. I'm still at the baby step. Step one. I'm still crawling down here. And thankfully, get a better job, better situation. Everybody's like, yo, man, yo, liking me at work, getting pay raise, being able to 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 make a decent living. All right, cool. I'm good. Good. Finally catch up with some family members, people that I looked up to. At one point I did. They looked at me and they're like, yo, what are, you, what are you doing with your life? I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Well, that girl that you dating, she already got her plans all all laid out. She's going to make more money than you. She's going to do better than you. She ain't going to need you. So what are you doing? Pretty much looking at me dead in my face saying, you ain't shit. Or <laughs> you're not going to be shit. These are people that I looked up to. That I wanted to be like. Imagine I'm telling you that. It's like, damn, you have that much confidence in me. I know maybe that was their way of trying to coach me up. Uh, maybe. Instead of sitting down, I'm like, yo, hey, have you ever looked into this? What about this trade of this or this, this opportunity or this field? Nah, I never, never was like that. Nah. That was, that was hurtful. But... Kept chalking, whatever, cool. I'll figure it out, you know. Trying to be who you want to be at 19, man. Not everybody has that planned out, so I don't want anybody to feel like, like, yeah, yeah, like I didn't, I never in a million years I thought I'd be doing this podcast. So anyway, I'm like, man, I don't know what to do, whatever. So I finally meet up with some people, finally get my little situation a little bit better now. I got my friends and my family coming down, like, some of my family members coming down and enjoying it. Like, yo, yo, you made it, B. You made it. You got a nice place, stream in. You got a gated community. You got a car. Bro, you made it. Yo, that's what's up. Yo, yo, when your parents coming down? I don't know, man. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're waiting on me to get a better living situation. You know what I mean? Maybe. Maybe. All right, cool. It's all good. Grinding even harder. Taking it to another level. Because I'm like, all right, yo, I'm enjoying this work. I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. Finally decided to go to college. All right, cool. I think I'm going to go to college. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. Then, yo, yo, what's up, man? Yo, you've been down here for a little minute now. As my friends keep asking, like, yo, where they at? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. Now, what did you do to them? Like, what do you mean? Do to who? What do you do to your parents, man? Yo, you've been down here for like a, almost like, Three, four years now, B. He still ain't come down to see you. What's up? <sighs> Only if I knew. Only if I knew. I don't got the answers. I'm just trying to be the best I could be, you know? You know, they just caught up in their living situations, you know? In due time, they will. They will. They will. And their insecurities just started happening. Yo, me thinking about what, what did I do? I don't know. Maybe maybe they're not proud of me. Maybe they mad at me for making that move. I never told them why I moved. And uh, I don't know. Uh, is it I don't know. Don't understand. So anyway, I started going into depression. And you know the saying hurt people hurt people. So I break up with my girlfriend. I'm like, look, I can't. You're a rising star. And I'm just, I'm just nothing right now. I don't want to hold you back. I can't do this. I don't know. I don't even know who I am. I'm losing myself. So as I'm losing myself, I can't be with you. Because I don't want to, I see the potential that you have. She's like, what about the potential you have? And I'm like, I have none. I'm good. Go ahead. Go be great. And as I keep hanging out with my friends, socializing, drinker I was. I was a socialized drinker. But the pain and hurt inside was too much to bear. So I started drinking just to numb the pain. Yo, let me get a bottle of Hennessy. 
hey, yo, let me let me get a bottle of 151. Yo, let me get that Jim Bean over there. Yo, let me get that Patron over there. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah, let me get that Grey Goose. Better yet, let me get that Belvedere. Hell, didn't even matter what it was. As long as I had a label on it, I didn't care. <laughs> and I became an alcoholic, trying to deal with my depression. And I tried to kill myself that one time. The one the first time. Thankfully, it didn't work. So I'm like, all right, whatever. I'm here. I'm up. Cool. Let me just try to figure this out. And I'll never forget my homeboy. <laughs> he became like a brother from another mother. He's like, yo, me and my family, we're going back to Alabama. Ain't the biggest part, Bruton. Yo, why don't you come with? We got this day, we're going to do this. It's about two months in advance. Sure, you, you know, come on. Because you look like you just need to get away. And I'm like, thanks. Sure, yeah, let's go. I got At this point, I got nothing to lose. Nothing at all. It's about two months away, so I'm like, yo, let me get a journal. Better yet, I'm going to write in the journal, but then from this trip, I'm going to take an entire trip up the East Coast. I really need to get away and just clear my head. Why not? I wrote every emotion I felt. Pain, hurt, bitterness, angry, sadness, madness, you name it. The feelings that I had inside words can't really describe. And I took the trip, which was phenomenal, by the way. Really phenomenal. And I, to this day, I, I thank my homie for that. Thank my little brother for that. Always, always grateful for that. As I come back from my sabbatical, because I took like a month off, which I needed. As I come back from my sabbatical, I read everything that I wrote within those two months spans. And the pain and the hurt, it was hard to read. I cried. I cried, I cried a lot. Because I just had to get that emotion out. So I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah, I'm good. Because obviously this college thing, I, I couldn't. I had, to, I had to drop out. I just couldn't focus. Too much hurt and pain that I had. So I'm like, yo, you know what? All right, cool. Life is good. I, yeah, yeah. you know, I'm still trying to figure out the life and the route that I'm going. And I decided, yeah, I'm, I'm in a better situation now. I'm focused. I'm locked in. Let's go. Let me go to this college real fast. I ain't even going to tell nobody. I'm just going to grind. I'm going to grind and go graduate. Yeah. Yeah, this way, they could be really proud of me. During the process of that, it was crazy. And I'm like, all right, cool. Yo, this is my big moment. It's all good. Yo, I'm going to surprise them on a graduation day. Hopefully they can fly out. They don't even have enough money. I'm willing to spend my entire savings on this just because that's the moment that I wanted to share with them. Hell, I can't even tell you the last time I walked across and got a diploma. I can't, can't, can't remember. And it's crazy because that moment never really happened. My parents never came down to show the love. My ex-girlfriend came down and was so happy. She was like my biggest fan because she knew I battled with depression for nine years. And this was the one thing that I finally achieved that really made me happy. And the people that I wanted there just didn't show up. And at that moment, I knew, yeah, that's what I did wrong. Yeah. As the hurt, it's my biggest moment of my life during this time. And it hurt to not be able to share that. But I'm grateful for her because, you know, she was like, y'all know this is, this is all you wanted to do and you achieved it. Pat yourself on the back. It's the hardest thing I could ever do. It was smile when I really wasn't happy. Crazy. So as that goes on, I'm like, man, damn, I've been down here for so long. Yo, I'm thinking back of the moments like, man, I never really even heard from them. 
Hey, you know, I might get a text here and there. Happy 4th of July. Thanksgiving. Merry Christmas occasionally. I don't even get a birthday call. I might get a birthday text. It's crazy because three years in a row, one of my parents forgot my birthday. Oh, my fault, man. I'm sorry. I just got all caught up. Sorry about that. I know you all the way out there. I just, I just got caught up. It's okay. I'll make it up to you. Yeah, right. So I went into a relapse of my depression. Actually, I went to really heavy, heavy, heavy so much where I try to kill myself. So I try to kill myself three days in a row. And the third day, I wake up with the worst stomach pain of all times because I'm drinking every liquor that I had in my house getting over the counter medicine, combining them, chugging them as fast as possible. Because I don't want to wake up no more. And as I wake up, my stomach, all I all I want to do is just like just hug the toilet and just get all that stuff that I chow down. And then I hear a knock on my door. Knock, 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 knock. I don't know who is it. As I open the door, it's my ex-girlfriend. She's like, look, I need help with the whole, yo, are you okay? Nah, I, I know you. Nah, I really do know you. What is going on? There's something wrong with you. I never seen you like this. As I told her, yeah, I just tried to kill myself last night. She's like, no, 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 don't tell me that. I'm like, yeah, I tried. I just felt. I can't even do that right. Now I understand why my parents won't come down. Because everything I try to execute, I feel that. That's how I felt at that time. So I get up. She's like, nah, just chug this water. Just flush everything all out. Like, just come on. Just come on. Just come on. Just come on. Let's let's go out for some fresh air. And I, I can't even gather any thoughts. She's like, nah, you need help. Nah, like, you really need help. And I'm like, yeah, I do. So I call the suicide hotline number. As I call the number, try to get help. I check myself in to this place to get help. And I remember this nurse. He was super dope. And he's like, nah, you don't belong here. Like, I could tell. Your spirit is different. You definitely don't belong here. Nah, you just broken. But don't worry, God going to use you. crazy I, I, I maybe he was a visionary or maybe he's the one who put that in my head planted that seed so as I'm staying in there I was in there for about seven days seven days or so and I met some amazing people like seriously we all was in there for pretty much the same reason because we was all broken it was something that triggered us that just made us want to end our life and there were some people in there that had a chemical imbalance, which is which is fine. Yes, I believe some people have to be on medication because of a chemical imbalance. It's all good. But I don't feel like everybody needs to be on it. So as I went to see the doctor who run it, I'm like, hey, man, you know, not even a 30-second conversation. He put a pen on the pad. Pop, 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 pop. Hey. Hey, go to these three prescriptions. I'm telling you, you need. You have a chemical imbalance. You're unstable. You're emotional. You just need this. I'm like, nah, man, I came here for help. I, if I wanted any type of drugs, I'll just get that off the street with no problem. Trust me. Help me. Cure me. And try to throw some insults to get me all riled up. Didn't work. If you know who I am, I'm pretty much a chill dude. Um, so I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, B. I'm good. And as I sit down, and I thought, like, man, this is it. I know why I'm here. I know what's the cause of this, clearly. I just have to go face my fears and tell them, what's up? So as I get out, right, and I get out on a flight in New York, and I sit down, and I tell them, hey, because of your actions, this is the reason why I try to kill myself. 
They don't know how many times I tried. I'm pretty sure after listening to this podcast, they will. Um, and it probably was the best thing I ever did because I lost myself and I had to find myself. In order to find myself, I had to face my fears because I knew the cause of it. So I had to get to it. And as I told them, it's probably one of the hardest conversations I've ever had, which you can imagine. But the elephant that was off my back was phenomenal. Now, I was at peace for the first time ever in life. That's a price that I... <laughs> it's a feeling that like I can't even explain, honestly. So, so happy. And yes, we have... A, a great relationship. Um, I did not let my past dictate my future. So I worked everything out with them as best as possible. And I'm at peace with them and vice versa. Um, and it's grateful, you know, and I, and I think, I think my ex-girlfriend who now is my wife for a, that knock, you know, because honestly, if she didn't knock at the door, I probably would have killed myself that night because I went four times hard on day three. I probably would have went 10 times and I'm thankful for her and I appreciate her. Um, there's so many layers to this. I'm not going to get everything all in to this podcast. I plan on doing this podcast every week. And I appreciate you listening. Once again, I'm HB Mac. You can find me on every social media platform um, as HB Mac. And I appreciate everybody listening. Um, please, please share this as much as possible. Uh, just because you never know what somebody was going through. I told you this podcast, this is probably the first time I'm actually revealing my battles and my struggles and everything that I went through. And I'm thankful for it. Because now I'm strong and I'm able to talk about this story and I want to help people out. So please share this as much as possible. Um, and I told you, if you ever want to get at me, you can find me on any social media as HP Mac. And I told you, I'm going to do this weekly. So I thank you once again. Everybody, please have a good one. And remember, I'm always here to help you walk through this. Thank you. <laughs>